Our climate is changing. The summer floods of 2010 in Pakistan and fires across Russia already demonstrate society's vulnerability to the current global temperature rise of only 0.8 degrees Celsius. Latest science tells us that even by meeting our most ambitious emissions reduction targets by 2020, greenhouse gas emissions will be 30% higher than that needed to keep within a 2 degree temperature rise. We now know that reducing CO2 alone will not affect cooling fast enough. Even with a zero carbon global economy tomorrow, the existing CO2 in the atmosphere will continue to heat the planet for hundreds of years to come, meaning CO2 reductions on their own won't prevent runaway climate change. We need to cool the planet fast, and here's why. NASA scientists have predicted the Arctic could be ice-free by the end of summer 2012, while West Antarctica and Greenland ice sheets are melting rapidly. billion tons of methane gas could be released from the melting of the Arctic's frozen soils and warming of the ocean seabed, causing abrupt, irreversible and disastrous changes to the global climate. With higher temperatures, carbon dioxide stored in the oceans could be released. Even a fraction of that release could be catastrophic. At least 18 islands are submerged already due to rising sea levels, such as Chesapeake Bay in the USA, 13 islands, and Lohachara Island in India. Himalayan glaciers are melting for the first time since their formation 20,000 years ago. Glaciers worldwide are melting rapidly. Increasing water scarcity and floods are threatening food security and displacing millions of people. One billion environmental refugees are predicted by 2050. Thousands of rivers and lakes worldwide are drying or have completely dried up. 1,160 lakes in Mongolia have dried up. Over 90% of 1,052 lakes in Hebei, China are gone. More than 3,000 lakes in Madoi County, Tibet have dried up. Thirteen million hectares of forests are lost every year. Forests, cradles of biodiversity, extract vast quantities of carbon dioxide and pollutants from the air and act as a global thermostat, keeping temperatures stable. Our once fertile earth is becoming more desert-like. Six million hectares of land have been lost to desertification. A further four billion hectares are threatened, affecting over a billion people. The main causes are climate change, deforestation for livestock grazing and livestock feed, and overgrazing. Wildfires, a result of and a contributor to climate change, are increasing in range and frequency. Up to 
to 150 species are going extinct every day. Livestock production is a principal cause. Scientists warn of profound oceanic ecosystem collapses by 2050 if fishing continues as is. 90% of larger sea fish are already gone and there's been a 40% decline in planet vital phytoplankton which is a cause for concern because oceans provide at least 50% of the oxygen we breathe. Water pollution is killing marine life and threatening marine ecosystems. Vast oceanic dead zones are on the increase, the main contributor being runoff from livestock production. We are facing a full-scale planetary emergency. We need to find a fast-acting solution, and we need to find it now. This means rethinking our lifestyle and consumption patterns, which define our relationship with the planet. Could this include the food we eat? Here's a quick look at how that might be. Well, that was probably too quick. So let's take a closer look. To grow grain and soy for the 55 billion farm animals raised and processed for food each year, huge areas of rainforest must be slashed and burned. 70% of the deforested Amazon rainforest has been cleared for cattle pasture. And much of the rest of it is used for growing feed crops for the cattle. The burning from clearance for livestock pasture releases huge amounts of black carbon or soot into the atmosphere. The wind disperses this black carbon thousands of kilometers around the globe. When it lands on snow and ice, such as in the Arctic, Antarctica and glaciers, it causes the ice to melt faster. Why does it cause the ice to melt faster? Because of its color black carbon absorbs more of the sun's energy, warming and melting the ice. It also covers the white snow or ice, which would have otherwise reflected a lot of the sun's rays. As more and more black carbon gets deposited on the ice, it causes the ice to melt even faster. NASA scientists say that more than 50% of the accelerated global warming in the Arctic is due to black carbon. Wait for wait, black carbon warms the atmosphere over 4,000 times more than carbon dioxide. If we eliminate a large portion of our black carbon emissions, we create the chance for significant cooling in the short term. That's because black carbon stays in the atmosphere for only a few weeks. Carbon dioxide remains for up to a few hundred years. We don't have a few hundred years to stop rising temperatures. If we just reduce CO2 alone, it won't stop the melting of the Arctic and Antarctica, but significantly reducing our black carbon emissions could stop further warming fast. And that's good news for all of us. Even better news is that black carbon reduction is not the only chance we have for near-term planetary cooling. Meet methane. The largest human-caused source of methane comes from ruminant animals such as cows and sheep, or more specifically, their digestive processes. In other words, flatulence and burps. It's also produced when their manure decomposes. In the US, animals raised for food produced 130 times more excrement than the entire human population in 1997. 
That was 1.4 billion tons of animal slurry. One cow produces about 100 kilograms of methane a year, with 1.3 billion cows and 1.2 billion sheep in the world. That's a lot of methane gas. Methane has a warming potential 72 times greater than carbon dioxide over a 20-year period. And the biggest man-made source of methane emissions globally are the animals we raise for food. So, how long does it take for methane to cycle out of the atmosphere? Just 12 years. CO2 stays in the atmosphere for hundreds of years. Methane, a mere 12 years. Ground-level ozone, one of the main ingredients of smog, is the most prevalent greenhouse gas after CO2 and methane. Because methane and nitrous oxide, or NO2, help create ground-level ozone, by reducing methane, we can reduce the global warming effects of ground-level ozone. Less methane means less ground-level ozone. Guess what? Ground-level ozone's contribution to global warming is a full 25% of that of CO2, and yet it disperses from the atmosphere in just a few days. We still do need to reduce CO2 over the long term, but by reducing methane, black carbon and ozone emissions now, significant planetary cooling becomes a near-term prospect. Livestock production is a significant contributor to all of these powerful, short-term climate forces. The great advantage, an ultimate opportunity, is that they all disperse from the atmosphere much faster than carbon dioxide. They can halt global warming fast. They can give our world a chance. Carbon dioxide reduction is still important, but we need both a short-term solution and a long-term solution. Cutting back on carbon dioxide emissions is the long-term solution. The short-term solution, cutting back on the sources of methane, black carbon and ground-level ozone. How can we stop global warming? What can we do? There is a simple solution which takes a big bite out of these three powerful warming agents. It tastes good too, and is healthy for all of us, as well as for the planet. The plant-based diet and a shift away from meat and dairy. With the international shift to more plant-based sources of nutrition, far fewer animals will be raised for food. We'll eliminate the main cause of deforestation and burning. We'll have much less black carbon. We'll minimize methane and have much less ground-level ozone. Changing our eating patterns is something we can all do together with true optimism for a stable, richer planet. Eliminating, replacing, or substituting meat and dairy with a healthy, plant-based diet is the fastest way to stop climate change and temperature rises. We still have time to change the course we're on. We still have time, and we still have a choice that can bring about the change. If the future of the world depended on me, what would I do? The future of our world does depend on all of us and on our diet. What should we do?